I'm Dr. Mohamed Mikati. I'm uh, Chief of Pediatric Neurology and uh, uh, Director of the uh, Alternating Hemiplegia of Childhood uh, Program at Duke University. And uh, we have a program that includes basic science research as well as clinical research, as well as uh, uh, a comprehensive multidisciplinary clinic to take care of the patients uh, with uh, alternating hemiplegia of childhood. There has been uh, a lot of research that is very promising uh, uh, in, in, in different areas for research uh, uh, related to the cause of uh, uh, alternating hemiplegia and how we can prevent the mechanisms that lead to the symptoms. Uh, uh, it still has not translated into clinical, but there are a, a number of these avenues. One, uh, one of them is uh, the viral uh, uh, mediated gene therapy that we are involved uh, in and that uh, we have already started uh, uh, doing research on at uh, uh, Duke University. And uh, um, the other is for screening for new uh, medications, which we have done also at Duke University uh, in our mouse model. We have a mouse model. Um, and uh, uh, others uh, uh, are also uh, screening uh, medications in uh, uh, cells. Uh, uh, and hopefully this will translate into uh, uh, the molecules that can be uh, used in the mouse uh, and uh, then uh, can be translated in, uh, into uh, human uh, uh, studies if, the, uh, if they appear to be uh, uh, effective. And uh, 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 we are collaborating with other centers uh, uh, where uh, uh, they may do part of the work on uh, uh, the cells and we would do the uh, uh, work on the mouse uh, uh, in addition to our own screening of uh, new compounds in uh, uh, in uh, in the lab so that's one uh, this, this is a, so screening for mo uh, small molecules is one the other is the gene therapy which uh, we have been uh, doing uh, for uh, working on for the past uh, uh, two years now almost uh, uh, in, in the mouse model. And uh, the third is the uh, understanding the patho underlying pathophysiology. And this conference showed a lot of uh, uh, new information that could lead to therapy. For example, uh, many researchers are working on uh, uh, sodium and potassium binding of the molecule and that uh, and how to ameliorate uh, uh, the abnormal binding uh, uh, of the uh, these uh, uh, ions uh, uh, to uh, the ATPase uh, and uh, if you can ameliorate that then that could lead to improvement and uh, this has been shown to occur at the uh, molecular and cellular level this may actually eventually translate into uh, uh, the strategies to treat uh, the patients. Uh, uh, also, uh, other researchers in uh, this conference uh, uh, talked about uh, how the mutations in the ATPAs can cause misfolding of the protein, and there are medications that could help correct that. So again, uh, this could lead to uh, development of medications that uh, may um, uh, correct uh, the, the misfolding and hopefully uh, get to, to clinical application. Uh, also, uh, the clinical studies are being done to see the different effects of medica uh, uh, medications and strategies that are already available. For example, uh, I presented a study uh, from Duke where uh, patients with epilepsy uh, were uh, um, uh, looked at in detail and we found uh, that uh, uh, certain uh, um, uh, uh, patients respond to the vagal nerve stimulator, for example, uh, which is a standard therapy for refractory epilepsy, but there has not been any previous reports of its effect in uh, epilepsy in HC, and some patients actually also have their other spells, HC spells, uh, improved. Uh, so, uh, uh, so this is uh, uh, we also reported on the ketogenic diet, and we also reported uh, on other uh, uh, therapies that uh, 
uh, have uh, shown promise uh, for patients with uh, epilepsy and AHC. Uh, again, uh, none of these are curative at this stage. Uh, they, uh, they are small increments along the way of helping the patients uh, uh, more and more. Uh, I'm optimistic that this is a, uh, an avenue for uh, therapy that needs to be uh, looked at and looked at carefully and extensively. Uh, we will never know uh, until we do the experiments whether this is going to be a successful uh, mode of therapy. Uh, there are many genetic neurological diseases in children that uh, gene therapy has been uh, studied for, and in many it was successful, so hopefully the AHC will be one of those. We, uh, we are uh, currently, uh, as I said, doing the gene therapy in, in the mice, and we used one vector which uh, uh, did not show very good expression, so now we're using another vector. We are also uh, studying uh, the physiology of the mice to know which cells to target in the brain. Should we target all cells or should we target a, a specific type of cells, uh, which we have found to be very affected uh, uh, more than other cells, and uh, that will simplify and strengthen uh, viral therapy if we know that we need to target just a specific type of cells. We are doing research in order to uh, prove or disprove that uh, the expression of the mutation in this group of cells is necessary and sufficient to produce the phenotype. And if it is necessary and sufficient, then we will uh, uh, re-engineer the uh, gene therapy to target those cells. Otherwise, now we're targeting all all the cells. Well, I, I think I think the main the main uh, uh, change has been the awareness that uh, 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 we and others and the the, the community of uh, family uh, associations. Uh, have been able to transmit to physicians uh, so that they don't misdiagnose the patients and then manage them as AHC rather than something else. Also, uh, uh, the ch a big change has been in our ability to communicate with uh, the uh, treating local physicians to, to help them manage the patient patients in the best way possible to uh, 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 avoid things that would make AHC worse and to uh, be aware of the complications they, they would have. So uh, I, uh, because of this, patients with AHC are getting better care right now. Uh, and uh, this is to a large extent to the uh, meetings and to the guidelines that uh, uh, the dif uh, different societies, including uh, and different institutions, including Duke, we have some uh, uh, guidelines that uh, we use in our uh, uh, program and clinic that we published uh, uh, in the literature and that people uh, can access. So, having all this uh, additional information uh, has really helped uh, patients with AHC and. Uh, uh, avoiding medications that don't help, uh, trying medications that are currently uh, like uh, flunarizine or others that t tend to help, even though they, they're far from being the final answer. As the spectrum of the clinical manifestations is widened, and uh, we saw many uh, in uh, presentations in this conference, uh, uh, of uh, an expanding phenotype like uh, autism, schizophrenia, partial phenotype like we presented from Duke where uh, like patients may not have the full manifestations or may have a combination of uh, uh, phenotypes, AHC and epileptic encephalopathy and the RDP. Uh, so the, with the expansion of the uh, 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 spectrum of uh, clinical manifestations, we are testing more and more patients and finding a wider and wider uh, uh, spectrum of uh, uh, presentations and number of patients. We definitely are moving in the right direction. We're very energized. Uh, the community is expanding uh, 
uh, the researchers that are interested in AHC. Uh, at Duke, for example, we have multiple groups uh, in the clinical arena and in the basic science arena from different departments, from different uh, core facilities collaborating, and I know that this is happening elsewhere. So uh, the future looks very promising for patients with AHC, and uh, uh, of course, uh, things uh, uh, as fast as they are moving, we would like them to move faster, but uh, uh, we are very optimistic uh, that we are moving in the right direction. Another point that I'd like to emphasize is that uh, ATP1A3 is a, this, uh, is a very important molecule pump in the brain. It consumes 50% of the energy of the brain, and it has been shown to be very important in many diseases, common diseases, even for adults like Alzheimer's and Parkinson, so so that in those diseases that pump fails and that all leads to many of the uh, symptoms that occur in those very common diseases, also in stroke, also in uh, uh, low uh, uh, blood sugar affecting the, the brain, also uh, in long-term seizures like status epilepticus where the seizures are long. So. Uh, uh, improvements uh, in the treatment of AHC, discoveries in the treatments of AHC, uh, cures that may be discovered for AHC are bound to impact not just those patients, but also uh, a whole array of other disorders uh, in which uh, uh, that uh, uh, pump, the ATP1A3, uh, ATPase, is affected. <laughs>